Hello, Professor Wenzel here. I'm going to be taking you through a typical lecture session. So when you look at the course, you will see a number of things immediately off the bat. Um, you're going to see our information about who we are, how to get a hold of us. <clears throat> you will see two different Zoom links here. One of them will be anytime you need to get a hold of me when I'm, of course, when I'm on an active Zoom session. <laughs> which will primarily be during the lecture exams, but also any time that you want to meet with me and have a conversation face-to-face, -face, you will use this Zoom link. Professor Botero also has a Zoom link here, and um, that is for her lab exams, but in addition, I'm assuming that this is the Zoom link she will use when she wants to meet with students. There is one tab here called Before Starting, and this is going to have a number of things inside of it. We're gonna have the introduction video that a lot of you have already viewed already, um, general information about the course. There is a single Word doc, which has the schedule by itself. This will be something that a lot of students will be interested in looking at, so we separated it out and put it into a Word doc by itself, the class schedule itself. There is also a lab video which talks about the different Schoology folder introductions, so you can watch the lab video, which is Professor Botero doing what I'm doing right now, taking you through a typical session with the labs. Then there is a syllabus here. You will have the syllabus in PDF form only. <clears throat> to give you an overview here, uh, all of these uh, all of these folders that are in gray here, you will not actually be able to see. You will not be able to see any of these folders because we will be making them invisible. However, and that's only for the purposes of not overwhelming you with <laughs> looking at the entire course all at one time. We're basically going to be opening one session at a time. So when you first look at the course, you will be able to see one folder that says session one which I will take you through in a moment. I will also have a practice lecture exam, which you may take one time. You should be using this carefully as a practice. There will also be the scheduler for our first lecture exam, which will be June 3rd or June 4th. And then we've chosen to show you all of the schedulers for the entire semester so that if you know ahead of time exactly when you will be signing up, uh, then you will be able to sign up for each of these lecture exams. Here's your first two lecture exams, the first lab exam, lecture exam, lab exam, lecture exam, and then the lecture and lab exams, the very last ones. So you'll be able to have access to those schedulers at any time if you want to, if you need to move your name around. Remember not to move anybody else's name, but you can move your own name around if you need to change and as long as there's an open spot for you there. Okay, let me take you into a session here. So this will be our first session. And as you can see at the top, there is a simple instructions, complete lecture 1A and 1B and lab 1. Professor Botero has made that separate video that I showed you a moment ago where she takes you very thoroughly through lab session one as an exemplar. And allow me to take you through lecture exam, lectures one, A, and one B. And so all of these packets should be completed during those four day, four day working days, right? So the days that we're allowing for completion of this really is between the May 30th, May 31st, June 1st, and 2nd. Technically, you have up until you have up until June 3rd and 4th in order to complete these, but you should be completing them as quickly as possible so that you have plenty of time to review ahead of time. And please be careful, you don't want to be skipping over any steps, so you really want to complete all of these things. We've given you lots of activities to complete. And part of the reason for doing that is to make sure that your mind stays active and you're never questioning exactly what it is you should be studying. You should be studying the, th the materials that we've given you. These are you know, the lists that we've given you, maybe creating your own material as well, um, depending on how versed you are with the material. All right, so let me take you through lecture 1A here. So this first packet here, you have a reading assignment, you have an unlabeled figure. Many of my students do use these figures. <clears throat> Sometimes students will print the figures out so that they have access to them and they take notes directly on these figures, which I think is a great idea. 
you know, one exercise that you can do is simply, you know, you can reprint this several times or photocopy it, and then you can, uh, you can test your own labeling skills that might be helpful for you. So the unlabeled figures are usually the second thing that you will see. As I've said previously, you don't necessarily want to read the reading assignment front to back. What you want to do is if you do have the textbook, you want it open next to you so that you can reference any of these figures that were in, for example, the unlabeled figure here. I've considered these to be the most significant and important figures in the reading. Um, and if you have the book open next to you, you'll be able to quickly reference those figures and read what the textbook has to say about them. You don't want to get lost in the idea that everything that I say is the only thing that you need to know. You want to be open to the idea that the textbook also has a much more holistic perspective and specific details that I may not go into. And that might be really helpful for students sometimes to be able to reference that. So although we do not require the textbook, uh, it's a good idea to have one. Even if you have an older edition to save yourself some money, which I completely understand, you may still want to do that. The, the, reading, the reading pages will not correspond perfectly, but again, you can look at your unlabeled figures and you can just find the pages that correspond with that. All right, so then what you'll see in this packet is that there are one, two, three, four, five lectures. All of these are PowerPoints that are put up in YouTube. So you just click on this. And usually you have to click a second link to get to YouTube. And then here will be me talking about the thing. The idea of cells. Cells are the smallest unit of life. Um, the, there's a few de different definitions of cells, but I... So all of these then are are videos that you should be watching to complete this packet. After each video, I highly recommend going ahead and completing your quiz. Even if you don't get a score of 100%, you still can retake it as many times as you need to get that, that full points on the, on the quiz itself. So the quiz should look something like this for you. So as you can see, there will be true false questions, there will be multiple choice questions, there are fill in the blank questions, there are some matching questions, it really just depends on the topic. And as I said earlier, the what I do basically what I do to write these quizzes is I rewatch my video and then every single time I think of a question that corresponds with something that I consider important inside of my lecture, I create a quiz question to go along with that. And so this follows the video very closely. So, and it really highlights the things that I think are most important. So make sure that you are doing your quizzes right away, at least your first attempt at the quiz right away, even if you can't complete all of the, the attempts right away to get your full score, at least try to do it one time. All right, so you're gonna complete five short lectures here, complete the quiz off after each one. And then lastly, there is going to be a video showing a figure or a series of figures that we will be drawing together. So a lot of these videos are around 20 minutes long and as you can see here you'll need lots of different colors. If you have um, some colored pencils or some markers something like that my students get very used to very quickly um, drawing all of these things it becomes a tool that's very important. And so it usually starts off by showing the entire thing and then I start off drawing in front of you and you can just draw along with me as I go. The As you can see the quality is is decent. I mean you can usually see just about everything. I have a little trouble with green markers sometimes. <laughs> green markers don't show up very well but I've done my best to create a fairly professional <laughs> perspective of what I want you to see while still keeping it something that would be amenable to student learning. So this video is going to be taking you through cell structure and bi the bilipid membrane, um, the different uh, cellular contents here, the different parts of the, uh, the actual plasma membrane, and different types of cells. But a lot of the interesting and exciting things that happen in anatomy and physiology happen across the membrane. And so that's something that I spend a lot of time kind of dwelling on to make sure that we are really understanding what that plasma membrane is about. And then that carries forward into many, many, many lessons throughout the, uh, throughout the two semesters of this class. 
Now, once you've completed that lesson, you are done with the packet. And at that point, you have lots of material that you can review. You can take the quiz questions and put them into a, you can basically retake the quizzes as many times as you want, and some students are content just doing that. I've seen students retake quizzes as many as 13 times. <laughs> I don't know if that's important, but if that's a good way to learn for you, then hey, go ahead, you know, it doesn't really matter. You wanna make sure that your final quiz, however, the final time that you take it, you actually do get full points because these will be counting for points in the grade book. So make sure you get full points eventually, but retake it as many times as you want. <clears throat> you may also want to redraw the figures here. You may want to try drawing them a few times going along with me or using your own notes. And then you also want to try maybe doing it on your own and try doing it without any kind of guidance at all. If you can draw the things that are most important here, if you can draw all of this stuff, then you're in really, really good shape. Um, because, I mean, the reason why I do exercises where we draw things together is because this, this kind of act of learning is the perfect way to make sure you really are covering all the important details. Make sure as you're going through that you actually do interact with all of the things that are said here. For example, up here, I draw a phosphate group. I draw its phosphorus in the center, the P, and then it's got oxygens, and you'll notice the number of, number of double bonds, the single bond, the negative charge there. All of those things are actually important. So, for example, if I were to ask you on a test, please draw a phosphate group in its molecular configuration. This is what I would be asking for, and I'd be wanting all of that detail. Um, especially since technically, when you take an exam, you could just have all of your notes right next to you. I am definitely gonna be looking for all of the details that, are, that I find important. I won't be letting a lot of things go because I know that you are capable because technically you do have the ability to reference your notes. All right, so review, review, review. Make sure that you're getting seven touches of every piece of information. Make sure that you are reviewing things as well as possible. Students are sometimes a little bit surprised at the level of detail that is required in the, in the exam, in the assessment. However, um, just make sure that you're covering all these details and you'll be fine. And then you'll be doing the same thing with uh, the, the second session here. In this case, there's three videos. Again, there is a quiz following each of the videos. Try taking it by your, uh, try taking it as many, uh, try taking it right away after you view the video and then continue to try taking it again and again for review. And again, we have uh, draw with me here. In this case, we're gonna be looking at transmembrane proteins. So we're gonna take that plasma membrane that we were already drawing together and now we're going a little bit further and we're thinking about all the different structures of all the plasma proteins and transmembrane proteins and what they look like and the different types of proteins and so on. Lastly, once you have done all of your review and once you feel prepared, you can go back into the regular, into the regular course and you'll be ready to take the exam. Now the scheduler, as I said, all of the schedulers will, will be out. You might want to actually go ahead and take the practice lecture exam at this point after you've reviewed this material. If you click on this, it's going to give you, it's going to give you instructions. You will not have to start it right away, but understand that you will be given 18 minutes to complete three questions. And this should give you a good practice. It's not going to be worth any points. You can only do it one time just so that you have, you know, that you understand um, kind of how it works. Uh, you'll only be able to do it one time. You'll be timed for 18 minutes. These will be real questions that pertain to the information that you just learned. Um, one of the questions will be a drawing question where you are required to draw something on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, and upload it into the exam. So this will be a good opportunity for you to look over and make sure that you actually can do that, that you have the technology to do it. You cannot, I have learned, <laughs> you cannot actually uh, do this with taking a picture with your iPhone and then airdropping it to your computer, to your laptop. Uh, that is not allowed. That is one of the few formats that are not allowed here. 
So when students had difficulty uploading, that seemed to be always the case. And the only students who had trouble uploading were students who tried the airdrop feature. So instead, if you want to take the picture with your iPhone, just make sure you have a different way of getting it to your laptop. For example, attaching it to an email or attaching it to a text or something like that. So this is your opportunity to actually do that. During a practice lecture exam, you'll be able to work out all those kinks. These will be real questions. I want you to take it seriously. And it's going to be timed and all the things are going to be the same. So this will give you a good feel for how it's going to go. Again, there's going to be three questions in the practice lecture exam. One of the questions will be an upload of an actual sketch that you will do. And then two of the questions will be critical thinking questions pertaining to information that, uh, that the uh, information here pertain, um, that the information that you learned in your notes here. Um, I do ask you to take notes by hand and I ask you not to copy and paste information, for example, but rather to type it into the, the windows. All right, so once you've taken your practice lecture exam, you may have already gone ahead and scheduled your lecture exam. You'll have to click on this title again. Uh, here, you can see that there's two different times that you can take the exam. You can take the exam on June 3rd, or you can take the exam on June 4th, uh, 3 p.m. on June 3rd, or 8 a.m. on June 4th. And there are a number of slots here, but I can ac actu actually have more than the number that is here. I didn't know how many slots I would need, so we're just going to see how it goes. <laughs> if you need to add more slots, I think you can probably just do that. I'm not really sure, but you can just, I don't know, if you're having trouble with it, just send me an email and I'll, I'll add your name to the list or whatever. All right, so then once you've scheduled yourself, once you've scheduled yourself, you show up at that time, go ahead and you don't have to click on the Zoom link, but I will be on the other end of this if you have any issues at all. I've had students kind of thinking, oh, I have to check in with Professor Wenzel before. No, nope, you don't have to do anything like that. You can just go ahead and take your lecture exam and you can just click on this link and it will be behind the, the, the link here to take your exam. Do only, only click on the Zoom link if you actually have any issues. For example, if there's a question that's a little bit ambiguous or something like that, go ahead and click on the Zoom link and ask me the question. I have no problem with that at all. You just don't have to check in with me before you start. Okay, you can take the practice lecture exam on your own. This will not be during a Zoom session. You can take it at any time. It will be open for you to take, but you can only take the lecture exam on those two times that are scheduled. All right, so then, uh, yeah, as time goes by, we'll be opening more and more sessions. If there's any time that you need a session to open ahead of time, we will make it available only to you. The main reason we don't open sessions ahead of time is we don't want to overwhelm students and we don't want any kind of confusion. In the past, when I've opened these kind of sessions early, sometimes students will get confused and they will end up completing work that they didn't need to and they unfortunately didn't complete the work that was actually due that day or something like that happens. And so I wanna make really care, I wanna be really careful that sessions are not always open if they're not pertinent at that moment. So um, Professor Botejo and I have not decided yet whether we're going to close sessions down as we go, um, but we certainly won't be opening them early unless we are specifically requested to do so. So you can see again, a lot of these are shaded because a lot of this information you won't need quite yet. We will be going week by week, session by session, and op only opening the session once students need that information. All right, so that's about what I wanted to say today about how you're gonna make your way through these different packets. I really look forward to teaching this class. Students who have had me in the past will be very acquainted with the way that I do things. So this is very similar to the classroom experience that they have had with a couple of twists. There's a couple of things that are a little unusual, uh, but I, it should be fairly familiar to them. Students who have not taken my class before, of course, it will be uh, a, little, a little bit of getting used to but I think that you'll be getting used to it fairly quickly. It won't be, it, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Everything is kind of out there in front of you. There is a lot of work to be gotten through. We were very serious when you said, we said that you needed hours upon hours and upon hours in order to actually complete all these things properly. We make sure <laughs> to have plenty of exercises in place so that students are really completing everything 
and in the to the best of their abilities and it's kind of all put out in front of you you just need to spend your time looking it over thoroughly studying doing everything in your power to get the information into your noggin before you take the exam and I think that you'll be okay as long as you really spend that time really focusing in on the course and making sure that you are understanding things as you go along, completing all of the assignments, never skipping over anything, never taking shortcuts. Make sure you're really focused in on this. All right, everybody, good luck. We'll see you online.